Ladies and gentlemen, today we are going to start a new chapter on blood. And we have a grand total of, let's see, 15 words. That's actually not a lot for us. All right. So let's get started. First off, a little understanding. Blood. That is the liquid that is flowing through your veins and arteries, right? The red stuff. Uh, actually, it's not just red, right? It looks red, but really it is made up of a bunch of different things. And most of it is oddly enough, yellow, right? So that is going to be our first word. And that word is plasma. That's the actual liquid portion of blood. About 55% of your blood, this liquid stuff is the yellow soup of hormones and different chemicals flowing around. The reason why it looks red is because your blood cells are red and they're floating around in the plasma. But the plasma takes up a majority of it, 55%. We will talk more about that in the notes. So let's move on. Number two, erythrocyte. I'll make the screen a bit bigger. An erythrocyte is a red blood cell. So you have different kinds of blood cells and the red ones are erythrocytes. Erythro is actually a Greek word meaning red and site is another Greek word meaning cell. So this actually translates from Greek to English as red cell, a red blood cell. And its job is to transport things around your body, mostly oxygen. When you inhale, go all that air is now filling your lungs. You have blood vessels surrounding your lungs, going inside of your lungs and collecting the oxygen. Going, that oxygen is going into the red cell itself and that's gonna move around your body. Now notice the shape of the cell. It looks kind of like a float on the lazy river, right? Uh, there are some mutations where you don't get that round shape. This is called sickle cell. Sickle cell is a type of anemia, and because it is now in the wrong shape, it cannot carry enough oxygen, so it's almost as if you're not getting enough air in your body. You're breathing well enough, but the red cells would not be carrying it well enough if you have sickle cell. The next couple words also have erythro in it because it has to do with your red cells. Erythropoiesis. Yes, that is very difficult to say. No, I am not gonna require you to pronounce it. I am gonna require you to recognize it and know its definition. Erythropoiesis, the process of making red cells. Yeah, weird thing guys, you learned back in bio one, mitosis, where the nucleus breaks down and the DNA in that nucleus then splits apart and the cell splits around it. So now you get two cells, each with their own DNA. Well, it turns out red blood cells don't have a nucleus, so they can't go through mitosis. So instead, they need to be made from scratch inside your bones. That's more specifically the marrow in your bones. We learned about that in the skeletal system. Your red marrow is making red cells, and that is called erythropoiesis. Number four, erythropoietin. This is a hormone that tells the marrow to make the erythrocytes. When you start running out of blood, maybe you get cut or something, the blood's spilling out. It is time for you to replace that blood. So your body releases a hormone, erythropoietin. So that goes to your red marrow and tells that red marrow to start erythropoiesis, the process of making red cells. Number five, platelet. Cell fragments used to create blood clots. That's right, guys. Blood clots. You also know it as scabs. It's a scab if it's on the outside of your skin. It's a blood clot if it's on the inside. But either way, they're structurally the same, and they are both made out of these things called platelets. These are cell fragments, meaning they are recycled pieces of older cells. Instead of just getting rid of them, we are using them. And those platelets shown here and here. Let me zoom in a bit kind of blurry, but here, 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 floating around your red cells and your white cells, they're going to start clogging up holes with the help of other things we'll talk about later. And that is how you start making a scab. 
16, hemostasis. Again, let's break these words down. Hemo means blood. Yes, erythro meant red. This didn't mean red blood, just meant red. Hemo actually means blood. And stasis means to stay, to stay the same, to not change. So hemostasis is the process to stop bleeding. So the point is to keep your blood levels the same. Right? You want your blood to stay. So hemostasis is the process to start creating those scabs. Number seven, coagulation. This is the last step of hemostasis. All right, hemostasis is a process. It has multiple steps. If you zoom in, you see a cut in the blood cell and you see all the things filling up the gap to stop the bleeding. The very last step is for the blood and everything inside of this hole to start hardening up. That's coagulation. We call it the formation of a blood clot, the hardening of all of the material that filled that hole. Number eight, the next uh, the next couple words are all related to number eight. This is leukocyte. This is a white blood cell. Leuco is another Greek word meaning white, and site again, means cell. So leukocyte translates directly from Greek to English as white cell. That's our white blood cell. And its function is defending the body against disease. Now we have all different kinds of white blood cells and we're not gonna get into all the different kinds of varieties like T cells and things like that. We are gonna be a bit broader because there's a lot going on as it is. So let's start off, we got neutrophil. This is a type of white blood cell that eats bacteria. This is stuff that's found in pus. This is the stuff that's found in your pimples. If you pop a pimple and the white stuff comes out, that is neutrophil, making it look white. This is your first line of defense. If you think of the white blood cell as a military force in your body to defend you against invading bacteria and viruses, all right, this, these are the foot soldiers. These are the infantry, the first group to come in and attack in mass, to attack in numbers. And they're just gonna come in and start eating things. Eosinophil is a very specialized white blood cell. Right? It is going to attack parasites. So if you get something bigger than a bacteria or a virus going in, maybe like a tick is starting to go in or some kind of worm, uh, then a whole bunch of eosinophil is gonna start killing that. <laughs> Number 11, basophil. This is type of white blood cell, makes heparin and histamines. We talked about heparin and histamines in an earlier chapter, right? Heparin is in what we call an anticoagulant. Remember coagulation, the formation of a blood clot, hardening of your blood. Heparin is an anticoagulant. It prevents your blood from hardening because you don't want hardened blood. You want liquid blood coursing through your body, right? So basophil is going to keep making heparin to keep your blood liquid. It is also going to create histamines, which is what tells your sinuses and your nose, your nasal passage to clog up when you're in a dusty or polleny area. So you're not breathing all the bad stuff in. Number 12, monocyte. This is the white blood cell that becomes a macrophage. So this is a smaller uh, white cell that will become a larger white cell. I am not making macrophage a vocab word because we have already talked about that in the tissue chapter. Monocyte, if you guys think of the Incredible Hulk from the Avengers movies, monocyte is Bruce Banner and the macrophage is the Incredible Hulk. They're one and the same, but monocyte will transform into the macrophage. And this macrophage is going to be the big bad tank of this army. So it was really big invading particles come in or really big invading bacteria come in. This is going to be the heavy guns. When the neutrophil just are not powerful enough to stop it on their own, this guy's going to come in and just clean up shop. 
And then we got my personal favorite white blood cell, the lymphocyte. The lymphocyte is like the scientist of the group. That's right, guys. They are not actual soldiers. They're not going to go in and start fighting things right away. No, they're going to come in after the fact, after the macrophage just beat everyone up and tore them all the pieces. The lymphocyte is going to study those pieces, learn the chemistry of those pieces, and then is going to create chemicals of its own. We call antibodies. And those antibodies are designed to kill that bacteria next time we get invaded by it. So, or virus, if you get the common cold, which is a virus, the macrophage can destroy those viruses and the lymphocyte will study the pieces of that virus and then have antibodies, a chemical weapon that will fight that virus next time you get it so that the other white blood cells don't have to get involved. So antibody, number 14 the thing that the lymphocyte makes, also known as an immunity. If we say that you're immune to something, what we're really saying is you have made antibodies for it. So an antibody is actually a protein and that's going to attack invading diseases. Again, you get that common cold a second time, you already have antibodies that are going to fight it. An antigen a chemical that latches onto a disease and attracts the antibodies. It's like a homing beacon, all right? You got antigens just floating around, and if they attach to that virus again, they're sending off a signal going, antibodies, over here, over here, I got this guy, come get me, come get me over here, and the antibodies just swarm anything with the antigens on it. And those are your vocab words. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, good luck with the ed puzzle on this, and I will see you in class.